As the cryptocurrency industry expands rapidly, so do concerns about its environmental impact. Can we find ways to mitigate environmental impact while still benefiting from the positive uses of this new technology? Mining cryptocurrency uses a lot of energy, and rapid growth of the technology could exacerbate the climate crisis. Bitcoin, the first and most popular cryptocurrency, is designed to be energy intensive as it is mined by millions of high-powered computers all over the world. Employing a proof-of-work concept, the process is inefficient on purpose. See our crypto intro episode for a more thorough explanation of this process. The idea is that it's less profitable to tamper with the ledger if doing so consumes large amounts of expensive electricity. However, this puts crypto enthusiasts in a tough position. On the positive side, crypto tokens will power a decentralized internet, fundamentally altering the economics of banking, finance, gaming, shopping, entertainment, and even human interaction. New York City's mayor, Eric Adams, believes cryptocurrency and blockchain technology are the way of the future. He wants to build the city into a crypto hub, complete with crypto education and schools. And he puts his money where his mouth is. He just accepted his first paycheck in Bitcoin and Ethereum to further broadcast that message. But in 2021, a group of 70 climate, economic and racial justice organizations petitioned Congress to address cryptocurrency's climate implications. They cite extraordinary levels of carbon emissions, energy consumption and electrical waste caused by Bitcoin usage, manufacture and mining. Patrick Drupp, Deputy Legislative Director of the Sierra Club, stated, At a time when financial regulators ought to be doing everything possible to help tackle the climate crisis, it's clear that the status quo of letting cryptocurrency miners pollute our climate and communities at an exponential rate is unsustainable, unwise, and in need of urgent action. Regulatory oversight may be needed to guide crypto into safer environmental waters. But the wheels of government turn slowly, and crypto is evolving swiftly, so the industry will need to embrace sustainability with the same zeal with which it has embraced innovation. The Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index says Bitcoin, the most extensively mined cryptocurrency network, consumes 122.87 terawatt hours of electricity annually. This is more than the Netherlands, Argentina, and the United Arab Emirates combined. DigEconomist estimates that Bitcoin mining causes emissions of about 96 million tons of CO2 each year, which is comparable to the emissions produced by several countries. Annual mining for Ethereum, the second most popular cryptocurrency, adds another 47 million tons of carbon dioxide. A less reported ecological issue, discarded mining rigs and peripherals create a huge amount of electronic waste. Bitcoin mining produces a byproduct of around 30 kilotons of electronic garbage each year. Of course, Bitcoin isn't the only industry that uses more energy than some countries. The concrete industry consumes more energy than all of India. But some might argue that concrete has a more tangible use than crypto. Some crypto mining uses renewable energy. Clearly, we need more of that. According to CBECI, 62% of global miners use hydropower for at least some of their electricity, 38% use coal, and 39% use a combination of solar, wind, and geothermal energy. Of course, these figures are mostly educated guesses based on a variety of assumptions, and they're subject to seasonal and Bitcoin price fluctuations. Because mining rig farms need lots of energy, Bitcoin mining firms often seek low-cost electricity, locating in areas with abundant, reliable, and affordable energy. But some Bitcoin mining operations have teamed up with struggling fossil fuel power plants. This is keeping operational dirty power plants that would otherwise have been closed, resulting in increased overall carbon emissions. Originally built in the 1930s to run on coal, the Greenage Generating Station in Dresden, New York is one such example. The plant ceased operations in 2011 and sat idle for years before being purchased by a private equity firm and modified to burn natural gas. Since 2019, the plant has powered Bitcoin mining. The firm recently announced it had plans to quadruple Bitcoin mining operations by the end of 2022 and declared it had plans to duplicate its Bitcoin mining operations at other power sites. Greenwich will have to use more and more natural gas to grow its activities, resulting in increased greenhouse gas emissions. Carbon offsets purchased by crypto miners are one way to counter this problem, but this doesn't go far enough and is only a small part of a larger solution. One approach being used to make Bitcoin mining more sustainable is to employ stranded or wasted energy, of which there's plenty. Stranded natural gas is produced when hydrocarbon production yields a little gas on the side, but not enough to warrant commercial collection, so it's ignited and flared off. 
Since it otherwise will be flared, Bitcoin miners buy this gas at very low cost and use it to power Bitcoin mines. A properly operating power grid must produce more energy than its users consume. Otherwise, something like simply flipping a switch might cause a brownout. This requires more production than consumption to create that essential buffer. So many Bitcoin miners are co-locating as part of power plants to be able to essentially absorb that excess supply. The Bitcoin scaling algorithm also contains a feature to reduce energy use. Known as declining block subsidy, this feature decreases rewards for mined blocks over time. In 2012, when the protocol was still in its infancy, miner revenue accounted for roughly 27% of Bitcoin market capitalization. By 2021, it was down to about 1.9%. As more coins are mined, the system will manage more transactions and less mining, becoming increasingly energy efficient. Another major solution already integrated into many cryptocurrencies uses an alternate proof-of-stake method to verify the blockchain. Cryptocurrencies such as Solana, Cardano, and Cosmos already use proof-of-stake. And more are coming. With proof-of-stake, crypto users stake some of their coins in exchange for the chance to validate new transactions and update the blockchain, earning a reward. Ethereum, a major player, says it will eventually migrate to proof-of-stake. That would mean that its electricity use will drop to practically nothing essentially overnight. However, Ethereum has taken years to make the changeover, and some are skeptical that it will ever happen due to significant obstacles in converting the system. Some contend that while proof-of-stake solves the energy use problem and may work well for specific applications, it moves more towards centralized power again because users with a large number of coins may have a greater voice. One possible solution is to build a new layer on top of the existing blockchain. Two or more people who want to trade NFTs or crypto, for example, may create their own channel on the second layer where they could make an almost infinite number of transactions. They can settle the net outcome of their transactions back on the blockchain, where it can be added to the verified ledger via the proof-of-work process once they've done their business. This essentially condenses many transactions into only a few that must take place on the inefficient blockchain, saving energy in the long run. The Bitcoin Lightning Network, which debuted in 2018, is an early example of a second layer. Climate-based DAOs and social impact investing are other countermeasures. Check out our Crypto for Good episode to hear more about both of these. Social impact investing incentivizes easier ownership and development of green technologies such as wind and solar farms. ClimaDAO, an example of a climate-based DAO, incentivizes and drives climate action by distributing rewards with a carbon-backed algorithmic digital currency. Other validation methods are also being developed such as proof of history, proof of elapsed time, proof of burn, and proof of capacity. All of these approaches require less computing power, giving them an obvious advantage over the energy-intensive proof-of-work model. Although the benefits of cryptocurrency are obvious and revolutionary, the climate clock is ticking. While many are trying to mitigate crypto's environmental impact, much work remains, and we must continue to push innovation beyond these early solutions. What are your thoughts on this issue? Sound off in the comments below. Like, follow, subscribe, and catch us next time to see how you, plus science, can help to save the world.